everybody, and welcome to the Full Potential Show. Today on the line, we have Tim Connor. Tim is an author, a speaker. He, in fact, he's the author of one of the best-selling sales books of all time, Soft Sell, selling over a million copies. Uh, he speaks and trains all over the world. He's been doing it for several years, uh, although you couldn't tell from his uh, boyishly good looks. Tim, thank you for being on the show. James, thanks for having me. I appreciate the opportunity. Well, Tim, uh, let's dive right in. And uh, it sounds like sales is somewhere you've been focusing the majority of your professional life. Let's talk about what people can do in the economy today. What, what do you think are some of the challenges that entrepreneurs and companies are facing? And what can they do incorporating some of the principles of sales that you talk about in your book, Soft Sell? Uh, the one thing that comes to mind quickly was the foundation of a book I wrote this year called Overcoming Life's Challenges in Difficult Times. And both individuals and organizations, the number one thing they need to do <clears throat> is to be willing to reinvent themselves. I mean, sure, our listeners have heard of the concept of think outside the box. The problem is when you think outside the box, the box is still there. So I, in the book, I talk about a concept called throw the box away. And, and so what it really means to let go of the box is to just kind of step outside of yourself in the way you might have done things in the past and, and literally, in a way, almost create a new box. But then, of course, at some point, you're, you're going to want to step out of that one as well. But is that the idea? You're stepping outside totally away from the old paradigms, the old patterns, and moving into a new box that you might be better suited for? Or are you saying operate without a box ever? Totally. I'm saying, get rid, I'm saying get rid of the box because the world is changing at, at, at a tremendously rapid pace and the pace of change over the last five to ten years has increased dramatically. And so, you know, I've read, for example, that 70, 80 percent of the careers that exist today won't exist in ten years and, you know, 60, 70 percent of the careers that exist today didn't exist five or ten years ago. So you, you might have gone to college or prepared yourself for a profession five, ten, fifteen years ago, but maybe it's time to find a, a new way to take the talent, the attitudes, the, the passion, the experience, the excitement with what you have inside of you and redirect it towards something different or it might be related but uh, you have to be willing to see yourself in a different way first is it looking at yourself or are you looking at the market are you looking at the environment that you're now in where does that reflection process start would you say well, I think, I think it's both, James. I think, first of all, you have to be willing to look at yourself. We all have certain strengths and talents and abilities and inclinations and likes and dislikes that we have and things we're comfortable with. But maybe we need to get, you know, we need to be willing to, to get uncomfortable with what we're comfortable with. Uh, and and that, might, that might be, you know, going into an area that you never were before. So I think the first thing is you've got to look inside. Then the, the thing to do is you have to say, okay, where is there the potential for who I am, what I'm passionate about, what I'm excited about, in, in terms of where the world is going, where the mm -hmm. economy is going, where whatever it is I want to do is going. Uh, you know, and, it's just, and don't make it about the money and, and don't make it about the, the the selfishness. You make it about service. Make it about giving. Make it about helping others and sharing and contributing. And if you can find a way to do that, you'd be amazed how many people have, have lost their jobs and started the businesses that they always wanted to do. And and in, in looking back, they're saying, you know what? I'm glad I lost my job because I'm doing something now I really want to do, and I'm having fun. I might not be making as much money, but I'm enjoying life a lot more. Absolutely. And you know, that's something that I hear again and again on my interviews with successful people. It's that they have that deep frame of reference or that database of knowledge that even though they may not use it at the time they've read it or they've gone through it, when they actually encounter a challenge or they're at a point of making a decision, they can draw on that frame of reference for making better and better decisions. Whereas somebody who doesn't have that information, they never prepared themselves, they're not doing that personal development on a regular basis, they don't know. They're going to reinvent the wheel and make a lot of mistakes and fall on their face. So Yeah, you know, and I... And and I think the third thing is I would, I would you know, to give you a 30-second background in biology, the oldest portion of the human brain is several million years old. It's called the reptilian brain. And then there's the, 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 new, the younger brain, <clears throat> which is less than a half a million years old in terms of evolution, which is called the spirit or the love brain. And the bottom line is, is that because the reptilian brain is the oldest, everybody's first reaction to anything is to default back to fear, which is where, you know, the fear, flight, or freeze mechanism and what people need to do is they have to learn that one of the greatest ways to stay <clears throat> positive is through an, uh, an ongoing, daily, hourly, whatever, uh, a sense of appreciation. You know, mm. thank you for this day. Thank you for this mm. food. Thank you that that car didn't hit me. If When people will show constant appreciation about everything and, and get out of this, this victim mentality, that they would be amazed at how quickly things would start to work in their favor. 
Well, that's very generous of you, Tim. And, and uh, spelling on that is Tim Connor, C O N N O R dot com. That's that correct. Right? Okay. That's correct. Well, that's great. And and Tim, I think that's really the starting point. Then is is finding out people that want to do what you're wanting to do or are already doing it have already covered that ground because they're going to help give you the specific steps that you're going to need to take and then also help you to avoid making mistakes before you make them because they probably already made them too yeah i mean uh, you know it's, it, it's just it's you, you have to start man i mean you know it, you know i i have failed i i I have failed hundreds of times in everything, you know, marriages, uh, financially, as an author. I mean, I can tell you, my my past is riddled with failure, uh, you know. But but I've also got a lot of successes. But I will tell you, I would have never been able to have those successes if I wasn't able to look back. Everything that's ever been invented, everything that's ever ex- exists today, exists because somebody failed and kept at it. If somebody failed at it and didn't keep at it, it hasn't been invented or it hasn't been developed. So just because you've had a a, a difficult situation or a challenge or a failure see failure as, not as a, as an ending but she is just see it as a part of the learning process because you're never going to accomplish anything great I don't care whether it's in a relationship or a career or a business unless you're willing to confront and, and because anytime you do throw that box away you know and you're you're in unknown territory you're going to have some failures but if you're letting the failures prevent you from trying you, you're not going to do it so it's real simple I don't care if it's sales career or management career it doesn't matter see failure as a valuable t- learning tool and and don't care what anybody else thinks. I mean, you'd be amazed, James. People are more concerned today about what other people think about them than they think about themselves. I don't give a rip. I hope you like me. I hope your listeners like me. But you know what? I don't care. You know, I have to care more about how I think about me and feel about me than you. Because if I'm going through my life trying to please you, I'm never going to do what I can do in terms of my full potential. Absolutely. And, and that's why, you know, getting in touch with your values and what you truly care about matter because you're not going to win a popularity contest there you tim in your experience i mean you've been doing speaking and everything for decades now i mean have you noticed there's a polarizing effect that some people absolutely love what you have to say and what you're doing and then there's people out there that just absolutely no matter what you do will criticize what you're doing yeah, I can tell you 98% of my business for the last 20 years has been repeat business because my clients get it, but in those audiences there are people who, who resist because we all have a perceptual filter and we filter what we hear and what we see, and, and so what really determines how you react to something is not what you hear, what you see, but how you filter it, and basically, you know, I, I, I call it people's hard drive, and what you've got is p- people been dumping stuff into your hard drive, parents, churches, schools, friends, neighbors, and so now you, now you go into a career or a situation, and and you, what you do is you filter what people say and what you hear, and so if it doesn't match what's in your filter, you you resist it or you object to it. Mm-hmm. So, and what my what I tell my audiences all the time is, you know, you, you change your oil filter in your car every three thousand miles, so your engine won't blow up. Why don't you clean out your mental filter at least once in your lifetime, mm-hmm. so you have a chance at some success and happiness? You know, but what people don't do is they bring this this these prejudices, these this mindsets that have been put in there by other people, mm-hmm. and they've allowed over time. To, to have those mindsets direct and guide their lives, and so they become unwilling to be open and receptive to new ideas. I'll pr- just put a Republican and a Democrat in a conversation, and, and, and I've made my point. They, they don't want to listen. They don't want to change. They just want to argue and resist. Mm-hmm. <laughs> They're so deeply ingrained in their own beliefs that they can't even consider the other side. As long as it is coming from the other side, they're going to resist it. And you ask me what can you do, uh, 50% of the books I read are by people I know I'm going to disagree with. And the reason I do that because if I can't read something that I disagree with, because well, what I'm going to learn is maybe my values or beliefs need to change, but I, if, I, if I only read stuff and expose myself to people I agree with, then I'm never going to change. But what if I'm wrong? Mm-hmm. So, But if I expose myself to people who have different viewpoints, now, I, I might say, you know what? I am right, and based on that, I still think I'm right, but maybe I'm going to say, you know what, you're, you're more right than I am. I think I need to change this value system. I need to change this mindset. But if you don't allow yourself that opportunity, I mean, people in self-help business have been doing this for years. They expose themselves to everybody and anything that's just like them, and so they end up with these robots walking down the highway mimicking everything else that everybody else said. They never had an original thought themselves. Start exposing yourself to people and ideas and circumstances that have different ways of looking at things, and if you can't defend your own position, then maybe your position needs to change. Love it, Tim. Tim, you've got weekly tips on your website, timconnor.com. Weekly tips on management, sales, relationships, and success. It's on your website, right? That's correct. 
All right, Tim, thank you so much for your generous share of insights today and for being on the Full Potential Show. Thank you for having me. Merry Christmas and happy holidays to all your listeners. You too, Tim. Thank you so much. Well, that concludes this week's episode of the Full Potential Show, your number one non-boring source for personal development. I'm James Rick, and if you want to get more positive programming for your brain absolutely free on a weekly basis, just visit fullpotential.com.